All right, everyone. Hello. Um, my name is Ciprian Gal, and we'll be uh, over the course of one hour today, one hour tomorrow, talking about electron polarimetry. And I do mean talking about, so we're going to have, at least for today, a fairly interactive session. So before we get going, um, I want to ask who has not, who doesn't have any sort of programming with Python experience? Very well. Okay, good. All right. So those of you, um, so what I'd like to sort of reconfigure you all a little bit. Um, so um, I'd like to have groups of two or three. Uh, and so I'd like to, you know, you, we can move around however you want for a little bit. Um, but basically, I'd like to have in each group someone who does know Py Python, because we will do some exercises in Python. Um, and then, so I'd like to have the groups uh, be able to actually execute the, the, the exercises. So ready, steady. All right, you need to figure it out. All right, you have two minutes to figure out uh, in a group, two or three, yeah? All right, let's go. Do you know Python? Yeah, we need a laptop in the group. Excellent. One 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 person, one Python person. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they're Once we get to the thing, we can just. Okay. Um, so you guys will need to get the Python. Okay. All right. Ready? Yes. Anyone who doesn't have a group that doesn't know Python, raise your hand now. Good. Everyone has it. All right. Uh, then go to Indico. There's a little link here to a GitHub repository. Click on that. You need to have a Google call app. You need to have a Google account and open the, the Python notebook within that. Can you do it in Jupyter? You, oh, if you have Jupyter, just go right ahead. You can download, copy, GitHub clone, whatever you want. You need SciPy, NumPy, and, uh, and the last one, Matplotlib. So it should be. Oh, so you already, oh, you were prepared. Yeah, but I don't have, I don't want to be My choice. I delete all my accounts. That's perfectly. Uh, yep. Yep. Oh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Sometimes it makes it easier, but sometimes yeah, but it's worth doing the extra work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're going to have to go to Indigo first. And you're going to click that file. I can change the image to Protobay from the CERN. It's no problem. Ready? Who doesn't have it yet? Which group doesn't have it yet? Yeah, yeah. Just, oh, I just downloaded the iPad. I'll, I'll copy this link variable successfully. Okay. Now I'll go to Colab and so I file. Can I show it? Uh, just copy each other. Upload it. Okay. Yeah, I downloaded it. And click GitHub. Oh, this is uh, the where I'll do it. Yeah, you just copy it. There you go. Yeah. Now, I, I, oh, you probably just have a, I don't know the. You need to be Yeah, so the other, the other option actually. Oh, yeah, that's fine too. So just don't. Uh, so if you don't want to move your account, you try to finish the binder. The binder might take a while. Uh, interesting. Um, but currently, okay, let's try something. Oh, it's one else's. Okay, it's lab and yes, binder something is causing you to do a little and copy the link. Oh, yeah. 
Yes. It'll be Jupyter. It's Jupyter notebook, but only you're going to. And so I just have a while to actually start up right here. So so I think I tested that yesterday at some point. And now. Okay. So. Um, Spirit, yeah, it doesn't work. So it just, it just join us, yeah. join us. Okay. Whichever one, I'll click on this. Uh -huh. All right, ready? Excellent. All right, good. If we can upload it, that's my Oh, I just get it. Okay. All right, so for now, just leave it open. We're not going to make any use of it for, for a while. So let me just walk you through what's going to happen today. So I made, I was very, very lazy and I made almost no slides. I just have a bunch of questions that, oh, speaking of, I have a bunch of questions that I hope you and I will reason through it. So now this is the erase, the, the talking eraser that I'll set here. So when a question comes, whoever has the eraser has to answer. It doesn't matter what your answer is. We'll go through it, reason through it. Hopefully, we'll get the right, we'll, we'll get somewhere, yeah? And once you answer a question, you have pass over the eraser to the next person and so on and so forth. And I know there's a lot of you, so hopefully I have 40 questions. We'll see. We'll see how that works out, all right? Um, okay. Does that, does that all make sense? Good. All right. Uh, slides. Oh, it's open, but what I need to do? Just one question more. For for now, nothing. Okay. I'll I'll when we get to it, we'll get to it. Okay. So. It All right. Um. So. Uh, the disclaimer, which I'm sure you've seen before, is these are not my sort of original. A lot of these are not my original materials. Um, that and I've collaborated with a bunch of people. So, uh, start off with references if you want to know in gory details about polarimetry. Um, you can go through the slides at the CFNS workshop that we had a few years back. Um, there's an EIC working group meeting that we're, where we're actually going to, where we're actually designing the polarimeter for the EIC. Um, so you'll have a lot of slides there. This is a really nice paper that gives an overview of everything. And um, most of the stuff that I cover comes or is slightly related to this. And then this is a really old paper. It's, uh, you can see the format here, um, but it's a, it's a worth a read. Where we can find this note? The what then? This notes, where we can find them? I will, po I will post, I, I will actually post my slides on Indico after. Okay. okay. Cause, cause, cause it has answers and okay. you know, okay. all right. Okay. Um, so I don't, um, I don't know if you've gone through like sort of a little introduction thing, but I have, I wasn't here, so I'd like to know you a little bit better. So I'll, I'll take whatever, we'll see how much we take. And um, everyone, I'd like everyone to uh, answer three questions. Uh, your name, something interesting you've done, can be anything. And then what's your favorite EIC measurement that you've gotten through so far? So I'll go first. My name is Ciprian Gal. Oh, I'm pointing. No, I'm not pointing. It doesn't matter. All right. My name is Ciprian Gal. One interesting, I've, one interesting thing I've done, I've, I ran an experiment on the uh, S0G uh, parabolic flight. It was really fun. Uh, turns out that, you know, there's that equation for the pendulum that has the, the gravity in it. If you double gravity, the frequency doubles. It's crazy. Anyway, um, my measurement, um, my favorite measurement, is basic, uh, I'm cheating here, but it's basically inclusive measurements that will lead to uh, constraining of the decomp decomposition of the proton spin. It's something I did for um, grad school and I'd like to have it done at some point. So now you have the speaking eraser. Three, the uh, you don't have to stand up, but you do have this sort of like a mic. It's like a mic check, right? So everybody else has to hear you. Okay. You know me. I'm named, I'm Anna from Poland. Um, okay. I said charge Higgs in Atlas experiment. So uh, maybe I have also possibility to search charge Higgs in the EPIC experiment. Uh, I asked Sally. So it's, 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 it's from theoretical point of view, it's possible. So it's, it should be... Uh, 
from experimental point of view. Um, yeah, what I concern most. Uh, I like the school and I can give that. <laughs> yep, that's perfectly fine. Thanks, Anne. Hi, I'm Jennifer Rittenhouse West. Interesting fact. I used to be a waitress a long time ago. ESC measurement, all of them. I don't have a favorite. Oh, you don't have favorites? Yet. Uh, Not yet. Not yet. Okay, good. Well, hopefully by the end of this call. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Eric. Uh, this weekend, I walk more than uh, walk more than 40 kilometers. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward for uh, one of the main goals of PAC is to probe uh, the cold glass condensate. So I'm Forward to the results. It's a good one. Yeah. That's what I mean. um, Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gregory. I'm from Duke. Um, I grew up with pet goats when I was younger. That was pretty cool. And I, I lived just like a house. That was kind of, that was kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, I kind of like the gluon saturation stuff. I think that's pretty neat. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Akshay Vijay. I'm from University of Manitoba. Interesting fact about myself is. Um, last weekend, I explored half of New York City, <laughs> and my favorite uh, EIC measurement would be comfortable arimetry measurement. Uh, on yeah. Hi everyone, I am Asma. I am from, from Algeria. I'm working on part-time shower, and I'm here to discover a new field of research. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Benard from uh, Zambia. Um, my favorite work was when I worked with uh, Phoenix uh, at PNL. Um, I did measure transfer single spin asymmetries of um, uh, neutrons in the forward uh, direction, um, and later unfolded the uh, the, the asymmetries. Uh, regarding the EIC, um, just looking forward to kind of try and contribute. Um, maybe something regarding the proton spin. My name is Simon Schneider. I'm originally from uh, Austria. Despite really liking the Olympic sports, I decided to move to North Carolina when I'm working at Duke University. <laughs> um, I don't have any EIC measurements yet, but I'm working at uh, about two in the plus and minus experiments and measuring uh, fragmentation functions, mostly our measurements related to fragmentation. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Catherine. Um, so a fun fact, I volunteer as a, a bicycle mechanic in my free time. Um, I also don't work with EIC. I also work with Bell 2 measuring fragmentation functions. Okay, uh, I'm Zhu from China. Uh, interesting fact about myself, uh, I like science fiction and fantasy. And my favorite EIC measurement is that I, 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 uh, I like the uh, tra uh, transverse single spin asymmetry for the cities because I'm working with GMD. Okay. Hi, I'm Matthew, uh, also from Duke University. Um, I guess my, my fun fact is I really like to play frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> really, really like to play frisbee. <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, the, the measurement I'm most interested in would be. Uh, Hyperon measurements like lambda variance. Thank you. Um, I'm Connor. I'm also from Duke. Um, my fun fact I climbed a relatively short mountain, but so a mountain for the first time this year. Yay. And uh, it's most excited measurement. Um, blue on saturation, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Okay. Hi, I'm Oscar. I'm from Madrid, uh, University of Madrid. Uh, interesting fact is that I originally learned how to juggle three balls at the same time. Yeah. And uh, regarding the IC, probably the, I'm excited to see what it has to do, how, what, yeah, what it has to do with uh, TMD distributions and power curves. Hi, I'm Craig McRae. Uh, I'm from Canada, Winnipeg. Uh, same as Wilder, and uh, I don't know if there's any fun facts about it. <laughs> um, I don't know, does a fun fact count as I'm obsessed with representation theory? 
Uh, sure. Definitely. In this room, for sure. Uh, I don't know how much the ICU will do this because of the large energies of the collider, but I would hope for interesting results of quasi-elastic um, scattering. So, you know, excitations of the nucleons. Mm -hmm. Is that everything? Yeah, that counts. Yeah. Hi, my name is Brian. Um, I'm from Ohio State University, and I came from uh, Shanghai. And um, well, uh, interesting fact about, yeah, I like to play basketball and I'm down for some basketball if anyone. There's a there we go. Yeah. yeah. Me up. And um, interesting, uh, I'm looking for, like for EXC experiments, probably something related to gluon saturation or proton spin, something like yep. that. I'm Jeremy. I'm also from Ohio State, like Brian. Um, my boring, interesting fact is that I have two cats. <laughs> um, and I also want to see saturation, because Brian and I work on similar things. Hi, I'm Chamaka, and I'm from Stirling University. Thanks. This, this is the part of, this is the mic check part. Sorry. Um, uh, my name is Chamaka, and uh, I'm from Stirling I'm from Sri Lanka. Uh, I like to read a lot. That might be an interesting fact. Uh, I don't have an ever the ice They're all they're all they're all awesome. All right. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> no, she, she she doesn't count, I guess. <laughs> uh, my name's Brenna. Uh an interesting fact about myself uh on friday i saw a bird but it was like really big um so <laughs> my favorite eic measurement uh would be uh rare isotope production in the second interaction region which Ooh. i know is a it's there hi I'm, I'm james i'm originally from georgia the state um but i'm local here um interesting facts i guess i go climbing a lot um favorite eic measurement i guess a Pretty well constrained proton spin parameters would be cool. Uh, hello, my name is Jan. I'm postdoc in Brookhaven National Lab. Interesting fact well, of all sports, I like those where you trade potential energy for kinetic energy. So it's climbing and skiing. <laughs> and uh, regarding the physics program, it's I think I'm looking forward to something I do at STAR right now, and that's lambda polarization measurements, because that's also going to be interesting to see in deep elastic scattering. Yep. This is the microphone. No, this, that, that's the talking <laughs> eraser. Yeah, that's the talking eraser. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. I'm Bill. I'm postdoc here. Uh, thank you for visiting us. And uh, yeah, so my physics program I'm looking at uh, is, uh, of course, um, is these uh, U-channel uh, meson production. If you guys have no idea what that is, uh, it's uh, is a pretty cool process. Uh, come and talk to me. So it's, uh, it's uh, I'm a world expert on that. The only reason is that I'm the only person who does that. <laughs> yeah, next. Yeah, interesting fact. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, right. Interesting. Yeah, you missed the interesting fact. Oh, interesting fact. Interesting fact. I think it's, we should state that you guys should register for the EIC very <laughs> early. Right now, <laughs> like right now. Right? So we still have funding available, support for everybody. <laughs> so hi everyone, Derek Anderson from Iowa State, uh, stationed at Brookhaven Lab. Interesting fact, I'm learning to play the touch guitar right now. And uh, favorite measurements, uh, I like jetty and like jet substructure things. And I'm working towards doing endpoint energy correlators at EIC and EA eventually. Oh. Hi, my name is Howard. Um, I work at BNR Rider Department, and I was born and raised in Korea and came to Seattle when I was 17 to go to college. And then I got a job at Brookhaven. And so far, I don't have any favorite EIC measurement because I already know about accelerator physics, but I came here to learn more about what's going on inside the detector. Awesome. And, yeah. 
Hi, I'm Fred. I'm from Dallas. I'm up here because it's too hot in Texas. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, fun fact, I, I grew up about a mile from here. So uh, anyway, good to be home. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Dulita. Uh, I'm from Hampton University. Uh, interesting thing, uh, I, I used to play chess a lot, but I miss it nowadays. Uh, then I'm a, I work on pyonuclein scattering in pretty low energy. It's kind of perturbation theory 10 C expansion. So EIC is pretty new to me. So uh, I'm still exploring uh, what's going on, but I'm very I'm fascinated with all the technologies, you, uh, detector technologies, uh, accelerator, accelerating facilities, and all the theories. So I, I'm interested in. I'm looking. Good. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Yu Fu from Duke. Uh, interesting about myself is that. Uh, when people call me you, uh, I'm always not, uh, I'm not sure if people are referring Y-O-U. So you <laughs> better call me you fool. Uh, about the ES experiment, I, I'm interested in any uh, measurement about the hadronization. Uh, hi, I'm Sasha. Uh, I'm from uh, North Carolina State University, originally from India. Um, interesting fact about myself is I like playing badminton a lot, and uh, every TIC measurement, anything related to growth saturation. I think I'll have to talk about it. Hi, I'm Stephen Lee from, from George Washington University in DC, and fun fact of myself, I ride a motorcycle, and I haven't have a, a favorite EIC measurement yet. Hello, my name is Jingyong. I come from China. Um, I'm working on the high speed MD uh, distribution functions. And, uh, and for my third EIC environment, uh, maybe the she was uh, being symmetry. Okay. Hello, my name is Shubham Sharma. Uh, I'm from NIT Jalanda, India. And the uh, interesting fact about me is I read a lot of scriptures around uh, about yoga, Ayurveda, and spiritual science. And if anyone is interested, and because, <laughs> <laughs> because like a uh, lot of people here don't know about it, uh, and it consists of like uh, every problem we have, we have a plant. Mm -hmm. Like, so uh, we can cure it without taking medicines, all by yoga. Myself. And uh, my favorite EIC experiment is uh, like I would like to uh, see if IT's TMDs can be connected to it. So, hello, I'm Nisha. I'm from NIT Jalandhar, National Institute of Technology. So, I wouldn't say a fun fact, but uh, I would say I'm highly obliged to be here because it's take it's been quite a journey from being from such a small village of India where girls are not even allowed to study after graduation. Then, uh, I mean, no boy, even, even not even a boy, a single boy has ever attempted to get a doctorate in what to talk about other subjects. So physics is a big deal. So coming from such a town of 10,000 people where no one has ever attempted to get a doctorate in any subjects, and being a girl coming from that background to here, it's been like a long uh, hell of a journey. And talking about physics, so I don't work in EIC. I work in the theoretical chiral SU3 models and determination of the QCD critical point and the phase transitions uh, and the deconfinement transitions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alec from Georgia State. I work on just substructure physics. I'm a theoretician and yeah. yeah. The interesting fact about me is that I speak badly, but still six different languages. Nice. But badly, okay, anyhow. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to PDF measurements. In particular, I would like to see first EMD measurement of PC. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> and I'm, 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 I think we skipped them in back. Yep. So, so hi, everyone. I'm Vijay Kumar. I'm also originally from India, but my PhD involved in uh, Canada Regina University, and my especially research involved in all such a personal lab. Oh. I work on pion and kion electromagnetic bond vector study, experimental study. And my uh, fun, fun or interesting from this school actually, I wanted to learn about theory, uh, like this high, uh, high energy quark will go on interactions or what kind of uh, Lagrangian. And I'm getting all these uh, understanding some part of this 
theory. So yeah, it's very interesting to me. Excellent. Yeah, I got it for you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Juliane, I'm from Germany, and I enjoy sewing my own clothes. Oh, nice. <laughs> and my favorite EIC measurement will be anything to do with semi-inclusive DIS, as I work on the theoretical side of that. Uh, hi, I'm Daniel, or German pronunciation would be Daniel, whatever <laughs> you prefer. Um, I'm actually a colleague of Juliane, I'm also from Germany. Um, fun fact about myself is maybe, um, yeah, last year I was a volunteer at the European Championships in Munich, which was quite nice. Um, and for uh, EIC measurements, well, um, I'm interested in anything uh, connected to spin. So yeah, anything that would constrain the proton spin. Hi, I'm Tolga. I'm from FIU in Miami, Florida, and also a member of the Blue X Collaboration Hall via Jefferson Lab. Um, so. Physics context for EIC. Uh, it's like I look forward to expanding my understanding of particle physics and uh, and <clears throat> participating perhaps and contributing to some of the studies like structure functions, low acts, high acts, etc. Now, an interesting thing about myself, I some of you have actually figured it out probably. I have a hobby in trains and, and model railroads. I have a YouTube channel and Instagram with a really pretty steady following and share my content out there too. So it's good enough, yeah. Hi, my name is Thomas from the University of Virginia. Uh, fun fact is I used to play tuba in the marching band here at Stony Brook, actually, when I was an undergrad. Um, I work in low energy spin physics, so I'm excited to be here. You know, I don't have a measurement yet, but I'm excited to be here to learn a lot more, gather information and uh, figure out my favorite measurement. Awesome. Uh, hello, guys. My name is Zachary Waldwin, uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Um, so I guess my fun fact, not to one-up you, Oscar, uh, but I used to juggle competitively. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I could juggle up to seven objects, and I used to do tricks and stuff. So give me a couple of objects. I'll juggle for later. Oh, nice. Um, so I study um, kind of glue-on excitation. So kind of, I guess, my favorite measurement. From the EIC could be uh, something to do with that, but I absolutely love glue on saturation. I mean, who doesn't? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, my name is Bill. Um, I'm from Michigan State University. Uh, my fun fact is that I practice mixed martial arts and um, I am a lattice QCD theorist. So my first paper on the archive is about the nucleon gluon PDF. So anything that helps us constrain that would be very interesting to me. All right, uh, well, I'm James, I'm from Kansas. Um, I am, so I don't really, um, I don't really like to deal with airports and the whole going through security and boarding planes and all that. So if I can, if I can drive somewhere, I will. So I took a two day drive from Kansas to here. And, um, and, um, as far as the EIC physics is concerned, um, I current I am um, I currently work for the CMS collaboration. We recently did well. I mean, it was in 2015, but I mean, we you know we worked on the analysis for uh, for several years after that. Um, on um, we we were looking at uh, uh, UPC digets uh, or digets for ultra peripheral collisions, which. Um, has a lot of the same objectives as some of the as some of the EIC measurements do. So um, I'm interested. I'm interested to follow on the EIC. I'm interested to follow up with that work. I'm you know one thing I'm really interested in is seeing how the uh, parton distribution functions uh, for a uh, for a heavy ion compared to those for a proton. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. So. All right, I'm glad. Uh, I apologize if I don't won't remember your names. I probably won't, but I will remember your faces for a really long time. Um, so let's get let's get started. Actually, um, so a lot of what I've heard here in terms of experiments um, actually involve a particular type of measurement. So you know, my my first slide here um, is a question about what is the bread and butter measurement of the EIC and. Since you have the talking eraser, you get to answer. Okay. Um, Brendan? Well, with type, type of measurement. What type of measurement? Yeah. Even elastic scattering. Sure. Uh, and um, what 
what kind of um, what kind of um, let's see how do we get there? Mm, you have deep and elastic scattering, and you have uh, what is the observable that you're measuring? The uh, um, most a lot of the time. Okay, if you can think about it. Let's see. Um, well, I I mean we can we measure the electrons that are scattered. Yep. Um, and what what do we do with them? We 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 count them, right? Yes. And then what do we do with them? Um, so when we count them, we make a cross section. Yes. And then, but for the EIC, we have some special con considerations. So what we when we 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 want to reduce the systematics. So what do we do with the with the counts that we might that we measure? Would you like to ask a friend? Yes. Anybody? Nope. But yeah, we yep, we definitely want to maximize because we reduce statistics. Um, how about asymmetries? Yeah. So so my my claim here is that asymmetries are the better bread and butter measurement. Uh, thanks. You can can sort of pass that on. Okay. And then, uh, uh, asymmetries are the bread and butter uh, measurement for the EIC. So what what is an asymmetry? It's like the slide already sort of says it, but what what's an asymmetry? Say that. <laughs> it's an imbalance. All right. And how how do we uh, an imbalance of what? Well, well, he has a, he has a talking eraser. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, I know there's. Let me put that out of the way somewhere. But you think about it. <laughs> right. So, so what is the, What does this equation tell you? Yeah. Polarization in one direction, another direction. No, no, no. no. It's, so, so yes, yes, the stocking. Oh, if sorry. he wants to call a friend, he will. Oh, let's let's phone a friend. Phone a friend. All right, anybody. <laughs> so this asymmetric uh, actually the polarization of these electrons. So right sure. in this equation, so one is one direction, and then and the second condition flip this electron polarization, and then the same thing for. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah, it's related to that. Right. So, so what you have is you have, in fact, you, can, you don't have to have polarization. You can do anything you want, right? So you can decide to create an asymmetry between measurements taken during the day and measurements taken during the night, right? So your condition one could say my night measurements minus my day measurements divided by the sum. And that tells you if there's a difference and what, what the percentage of that difference would be, right? But you're exactly right. For the EIC, and in fact, it's sort of, uh, preempts my my next question. The important uh, the important part is the polarization. All right, all right. So um, the different so there we have different conditions at the EIC. What what makes the EIC special in this case? So he mentioned electron polarization. Anything else? Higher luminosity, um, right? I think that's the biggest. One. How about the hadrons? Uh, what about them? They, they're also can be polarized. Oh, exactly right. So, so we can have polarization of both protons and potentially deuterons. We'll see about that. Um, but uh, I can ask a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, Hera also did. Uh, Correct. So, did they have polarized hadrons? I can't. They do not. They do not. Okay. Yeah. So that's the difference. Okay. Yep. So, um, all right. So, in that case, the asymmetry here actually scales with the polarization of your electron and of your hadron. So if you pass that along, so what, what would happen, say, if, uh, if, my, if I had no polarization in my electron, what, what would my asymmetry be? It, uh, the electron is both not polarized. Yep. Hadron's not polarized, the hadron is both. Uh, let, let's just since since this is an electron electron polarimetry uh, lecture, let's uh, let's ignore the the pesky hadron polarization. So my condition here is the electron polarization. But if there 
if the electron's not polarized, what happens to the asymmetry? Well, then it disappears. Meaning it goes to zero, right? Yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. So, so in fact, the, the important part is the higher the polarization, the bigger the effect, right? And that's why it's actually one over the polarization here, right? Uh, so I think that takes us to the first exercise here. So if you go to your little Python notebooks, do I have this here? Yeah, all right. So, so you have the equation for the, uh, for the asymmetry here. Um, it says, um, evaluate the level the uncertainty comes from a polar, for a polarization measurement uncertainty. Uh, you can use pen and paper for this. Let's say you, you want to measure an asymmetry of 5% and you have 80% polarization and you know that polarization to 3%. What will be the uncertainty coming from, let's say we counted perfectly. We, all of this, we have all the statistics in the world because the EIC is so great. But my polarization measurement is only to 3%. What will be the uncertainty on A? So, so if you have your little notebooks there, that will be the first exercise. So code that up real quick. Go. You can talk amongst yourselves. And please raise your hand when you're done. Or if you have a question. Right on top. Polarization just for the electron, right? In the, the polarization is just for the electron here, it's for the hydron. The thing that we should expect to each um, variable is yeah. left hand side of the but what's n and what's bar at 0.0? Oh, is it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. This, doesn't matter. this the these are out. assume they are constants. Right. 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 I do exactly the same. We can calculate that first. So, what we can do, I'll show I think it's about a but we don't know how to value So, point eight is the portation. Absolute. And so we like to be the point in the normal case. We're going to assume it's one day. Oh, no. no. Um, it's a con everything else is a constant in this equation. Yeah. So P is the only one that matters. Everything else is a constant. Are you saying that the asymmetry we measure in the experiment, which is the bracket, because, you know, yeah, correct for polarization. So is the left hand side 0.05 or is the right hand side part 0.05? This is 0.05. Okay. This is what you measure. Okay. No. Oh. So this is 0.05. Oh. But um, uh, so P, uh, P, is 80% or just P, H? How do you do? P, P, E is, uh, is 80%. So that's the only thing that's 80%. Also in that equation, which is uh, pH. Okay. So we can solve for that converse, because that's going to be useful for the propagation. So okay. what I can say is that this formula uh, uh, So if I kind of like reduce that, yeah. I'd say well, we have this uh, uh, x divided by uh, zero point uh, uh, yeah. right? Because right. the x is going to be the order. Yeah. So we're going to do that first. We're going to do some years. Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to do that. Yes. So that's going to give us the remaining piece on the right. So we're going to always remember that as the one eight. Now, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the one of the eight. That's the only way to Because we've got some dumb things on this. But we know the left hand side is 0.05, and then the PE is 1.8. That's going to give us the best. That's how you put Anything with algebraic yeah. hashtags or promising yeah. that yeah. on this is the actual yeah. code line that I know. So, but then we don't know what the problem is. That part's not going to be right here. And all we need to do is just uncertainty propagation right. on A. Yeah. So, that's it's going to be so yeah, there are certain things that are missing us here is that um, we're going to have A is X P. So we just need uncertainty of A. Right? And if there's only uncertainty of I think there's like this. Yes, you are looking for the A. Uncertainty squared. 
have this. Yeah, it's a derivative. But like, if you have like, um, yeah, you know, certain DMD. But the the TA that you have, like, this is like um, I got the number. Actually, I think actually, I don't know. We already have a. Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to do that. Um, so. Yes, yeah. Well, what we're just going to do is, you know, the uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Then you because usually put it next to you. Yeah. Also, do you guys think you'd be able to like program like yeah, well, this calculation? That's exactly. It'd be kind of the same thing. So, we don't have a software. It's up guys. Yeah, we would use it. What I would only do is All right, so I I said, okay. Yeah. So I see I, at least a few groups have got have got it. So the <laughs> two more minutes. All right. 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 You got it. Well, yeah, that would be but if you want just a raw exercise, right? Okay, so the all right, the answer comes out to 1.875. The relative uncertainty on A is 375. So, in fact, what it turns out to be that your relative uncertainty on your polarization, so 3% divided by 8% here is the same uncertainty that you'll have on your asymmetry. So what that, what does that mean? Who has the talking eraser? Do you need to pass it on? All right, so what does that mean? Oh, okay. Like the DA over A? Yeah. That um, it's 3.75% of, of the actual asymmetry. Sure, so what, what, is it useful for me to measure A, to what precision should I measure A? Right? How long should I run the EIC to get A if my polarization uncertainty is that? Uh, so the EIC, one of the biggest things for the EIC is that it, it has the high luminosity, right? So you can get a lot of events, like, like he pointed it out earlier, right? You can get all the events, right? So, so then, but if my polarization uncertainty is high, What's the is it useful to run the EIC for a really long time to get all the events? Right, that's the the, the shaking of sorry to translate to everybody. The shaking of the head is no, right? Because I have a high uncertainty of what I'm measuring coming from the polarization itself. So it doesn't matter if my statistics get me to below one percent uncertainty on it, right? So the fact that the polar, so that's why polarization measurements are important. Yeah, for example, so you increase the intensity, you add more accidental, similar problem. Similar to that, right. Okay. All right. So now let's get into how do we actually measure polarization? So does, does anyone have any? Oh, uh, we move on. How do we measure polarization? I forgot. Sometimes I forget. Well, to be honest, uh, I don't know. Okay. So, I know how to you, how you would do it for like right? you would just have polarization filters. Sure, polarization filters. Yeah, that that would work. Um, but in terms of particle physics, what do you think? Mm. How about the previous slide here? Could we use this equation somehow to measure polarization? You know all the other values. Yes, bingo. All right, we can move on. So we can we can if I know everything here. 
if I know a process that where I know everything, it obviously uh, scales by polarization somehow, and I measure something, then it means that whatever I measure is a direct uh, proportionality to the polarization of my beam, of my pro particle beam, whatever you have, right? Um, so the polar in this case, the, the highlight here is that polarization measurements rely on precisely known physics processes. Yeah. Um, so does any know? So we're going to talk a lot about today and I guess partly tomorrow about Compton scattering. So does it, uh, who has the neck, who has the stick, uh, the eraser? What's Compton scattering? Do you know? <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. It, it, it's it's a it's a stressful situation, so I I forget things all the time. Do you like to call a friend? Alex, is it Alex? Bam! Nicely done. Ele there we go. See the the intuition got you there. All right. So we have an electron, we have a photon, and there's some scattering. That's Compton scattering. Easy. Um, now, why why is this? Can somebody tell? Well, who has the stick? Who has the eraser now? All right. Why? Why is this process? Uh, what's What's interesting about this? Why? Why is it? Why is it that we can use it for a polarization measurement? Oh, because of electricity concentration. Sure. That those those are important. But what kind of process is this? Okay. Yep. Yep. So we'll actually get to that. You'll you'll get to you get the cal. Oh, all right. So that, that that's a call a friend. Um, so yes, yeah, some of some of the energy is carried by the photon. Some of the energy carried by the electron. Um, but what kind of physics does this involve? Is it QCD? No, no, electromagnetic field. Okay. So the QED. All right. What do we know about QED? Yeah. Huh? I can't hear. Sorry, I'm hard of hearing. I mean, what's special about QED in what sense? What well, What do we know about QED? Uh, you know very well QED. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so when I get when we get okay, so now everyone's job when he gets the the, the talking eraser, everyone has to answer all at once. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's that's the that's the answer. So we know QED very very well, right? So what that means is that I can calculate, or I mean. I guess I could, I actually could. I, I could calculate this process and know what this A effective would be very, very well. So if I know A effective and I run an experiment where I scatter electrons from some photons and I measure an asymmetry that's half of what A effective is, then what's my polarization? Whoever has the talking, the talking eraser gets the answer. All right. So I know I know this very well. I expect uh, I expect a particular asymmetry, and I measure half of that asymmetry. What's my polarization? Yes, half. It's it's a really simple question. It, it was not a trick question. It was exactly right. So if I expect an asymmetry. Because I've calculated this, I know what this is, and we'll get to that in a minute, and I get half of my asymmetry, then it means that this electron was only half of them were polarized. So that's my polarization question. What if your A effective was just wrong? Please yes, that is a, that's a very good question. And that actually comes into the uncertainty we have in the calculation, right? So that's in, that comes into the systematic of this measurement, right? So when I at the end of the day say, well, we, the EIC has a polarization of 70% plus or minus whatever, that whatever includes the uncertainty on, the, on my QED calculation. All right, excellent. Uh, all right, so let's see. Analyzing power. So the A effective, sometimes called analyzing power, people call it analyzing power. Uh, so now let's, uh, let's, let's go back to here because I don't want, uh, who has this? All right. So, can you think of um, any advantages to making this measurement? So, imagine the EIC. The EIC is a bunch of electrons moving around, 
and I want to measure their polarization. Now, if I have this type of interaction where I, I somehow get a photon to scatter off of one of the electrons in the beam, what would be an advantage for the EIC? Can you think of something? Anything is fine. What happens to the other electron? So I have 10 electrons. I have one photon scatters off of one of the electrons. What happens to the other electrons? Do they get, do they get scrambled by the, by the photon because of some field? Sure, that's, that's true. So when the photon moves and interacts with my one electron, does it create a field where the other electrons, uh, generally electrons get bent by or moved around by magnetic fields, right? So when my photon comes in, does it create a magnetic field? Yes, that's, no is the correct answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so the advantage here is that if I have a scattering with a photon from an electron, then the rest of the electrons are perfectly fine to go on and do whatever they need to be doing, like interact with protons in my detector. Does that make sense? So, okay, so that's, that's one of the advantages here. So we can monitor the polarization. As people are taking data, we can monitor the polarization uh, in real time. Right? So we can figure out what the electron beam is, how well it's polarized while data taking is taking place. The other thing we already discussed, because it's QED and because we know a lot about QED, it has low systematics. And the other part of, uh, of course, we will talk about it soon, but this photon is also polarized. And the polarization of the photon gives me some, some information there. And lastly, the machine setup actually requires a very fast relative polarimeter. So when you set up the machine at the, at the beginning, what you need to do is make sure that the magnetic lattice is perfectly right. So the, the beam doesn't, doesn't wobble around because if it would, then you lose polarization. So that's one way to tune by making um, this measurement. The other thing is that this type of interaction Works, at, works very well at different energies. So now uh, in, oh, yeah. You said this virtual photon, which is, is a virtual photon, right? Say uh, that again. This is a virtual photon, right? Emitted from scattered electrons of the virtual photon. You said it's a polarized photon. No, this is not a virtual photon. This is a photon photon. Oh, okay. okay. That, that makes sense. Oh. Yeah. So, again, the, sorry. So this, how this photon polarized? Because we are not How is the photon polarized? After emitting, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Okay, I'll, I'll let that for you. You, you. you need to research that till tomorrow and let me know. And that's a question for you. How do you, how do you polarize the photon? Question. So can you restate the meaning of the A measured PV? Man? Right, so, so what I was saying earlier is that when, if you want to figure out how polarized the electron beam is, if you know a process, so I can calculate this in QED because I know it very well. So now that means I know my A effective and I make an actual measurement. And my actual measurement is scaled by the polarization of the beam. So if I have a 50% polarized beam, my asymmetry is gonna be half of what I expect, okay? Uh, works at different energy, all right. Okay, so now, Let's talk about specifics. Um, so sorry for all the theorists in the room, but um, now I want to make a photon. How do I make a photon? This partly goes to your question, but how do I make a photon interact with a, an electron beam? Uh, who has, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, there's, I don't need to wait. Who has the stick, uh, the thing? How do I make a photon? No, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's right, there we go. How do I make a photon? There's photons all over here. Ask a yeah, you can ask a friend, ask a friend. All right, anyone of the friend? Yep. Some, uh, 
uh, excitation and imita imitation of uh, in the epoch spectrum. Sure. What happens here? Oh, there we go. So, so any light, right? In principle, you could have any light and produce that. Uh, but it turns out we, you need a lot of light. How do you end all the photons to sort of act in a in a sort of nice coherent way? How do we what do we do that usually? Anyone? Uh, no, actually, no, no. Give this. Give the eraser back. Next person. Give the eraser to the next person. Go. Yes, lasers. Do we know what lasers are? Yes. No. Maybe. Lasers. All right. The pointy things. Yes. All the light in the laser has very specific properties, okay? So current, So this is a chart. So now we're gonna go into having a little bit of discussion about the laser that we're gonna use. So, or the light that we're gonna use for our Compton scattering. So this is a chart where on this X axis, you have wavelength. So, um, and on the Y axis here, you have power. So all of these lines are, uh, basically telling you at what wavelength and how much power we can create. So people have been very, very diligent about making lasers at different wavelengths. And uh, who has the eraser now? Okay, what's, what's the difference between uh, two wavelength lasers? What's some of the difference? Yep, and the different frequency means what? Yes, exactly. So the the... The frequency means different energies. So uh, it'll turn out that we actually will need a laser with high power. So if I'm looking at 10 watts of power, so this is a log scale, one watt, 10 watts. Uh, no, I think it's a log scale. Yeah, one watts, 100 watts, one kilowatt. So if I draw a line here, you see that there's a bunch of lasers here that I can't actually use. Um, so I think, uh, let's see, next, all right. Next, we go into your next exercise. Calculate the energy of a 300, 532 nanometer photon in units of MeV. So in your little uh, Python notebook, so I think, I think I gave you the constants. All you have to do is put in the equation. Yeah, it's H 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 yeah, sure. Oh, it's H bar C. We have to convert C Yeah, yeah. We have to convert pi. So H bar. Sorry, which direction is it? H divided by H bar. So two pi h bar is supposed to be long pi. Yeah, yeah. Yes, pi h bar. Yes, I just couldn't remember. Yeah, and then we have to try this. I'm sure Donald yeah. should be the whole presentation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh. No, no, but it should be multiplied by It should be multiplied by 2 pi and divided by oh. yes. h bar is h divided by yes. h. Yes. So h is h bar. Yeah. Of course, I don't know who your peer is too. I mean, it's one. You had like in point one. We had to do we had to do it all the time. Uh, I would actually okay. like when I was writing the full text. All right. Like, How are we doing? Okay. Anyone has an answer yet? One, two, three. All right, good. All right. So you can compare your answer later. Uh, I still want to go through a couple of things before we're done. So this is the energy, the photon energy in the units of MeV. Does any know, does anybody know? what uh, the 
energy of the electron beam is? What's the energy of the electron in the interaction? In the electron beam at the, I say, oh, who has the, well, I'm sure. I forget again, who has the thing? All right, what's the energy of the beam in the electron beam at the EIC? Do you remember? Okay, does anybody remember? What's the energy of the beam at the elect at the EIC? 18. 18. Any 5, 12, 18. There we go. Good, good answer. So it's 18 what? GV. GV. So this is how much, how does that compare? This is an MEV and the beam is 18 GV. How does that compare? Who has the thing? Yes. How does it compare? Very, very small. Exactly. Now you can pass it on. All right. So, so now if I have a very small energy thing colliding with a very high energy thing, what will happen kinematically? Who, who has the thing? All right. Yeah. All right. Can you, can you repeat question? So this photon has less energy, right? This photon has very little energy. This has a lot of energy. What happens to the photon? Where does it go? Photon interact with the uh, hadron, but uh, oh. left with less energy. There's no hadron here. It's just an electron. Uh, Do you want to ask a friend? Then maximum energy carry by this uh, get electron. Sure, it's more energy, but I'm asking what happens to the photon? It doesn't disappear. Photon scatters. Where does it go? Do you want to ask a friend? Oh, in that, in direct, that, in terms of angles, right? Yes. So you are asking term. So uh, I think if I have a car and I collide with you, I have a truck, a big truck, and I come at you. Which way are you going to fly? I think that. There we go. There we go. Back. Excellent. So what we this is a this is backscattered. This photon is backscattered. It will go in the same basic direction as the as the electron. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay, so some information. So we some notations here. So gamma here is the energy of the laser, which we discussed is 532 nanometers over the mass uh, over the mass of the electron. Energy of the scattered photon. So once we have some, beam, who has the thing now? Oh, you need to pass it on. Who wants to take this? No, the next one takes it. Okay. It's not who wants. Okay. There we go. All right. So what happens? What happens in this interaction? So the electron comes in. It has collides with the photon. Uh, what happens to the photon energy? What do you expect? What's your physics intuition tell you? Depends on what type of photon that is. Yeah, it's a 532 nanometer. Oh, then. It's a very low energy. We've just, just discussed. Electron beam, high energy. Photon, low energy. What happened? What do you expect the photon energy to be? It's definitely less than um, the energy of the 532 nanometers. Because okay. some, One. Of the, some of the energy is shared with the uh, scattered electrons and back scattered. So... All right, so what if, uh, let's go to my truck analogy. I'm coming in 50 miles an hour at you, and you're running towards me. If I collide with you, are you going to have more velocity or less velocity after I collide with you? Less. You think so? Well, well whatever, that's, that's, that's a good point, but in, let's say we're backscattered, right? So, uh, you know, units matter, uh, direction matter, but... If I collide with you at 50 miles an hour and you're running towards me, when you're flying off from the truck, do you think? What do you think? <coughs> Less or more than the velocity that you're running? Oh, definitely. Okay, more. All right. So now let's apply the same thing to this photon. So the energy of the photon will be more or less than 532 nanometers. More. Yes. All right. So are we all, does that make sense to everybody Intu intuitively? Yes. So. What happens is that the electron comes in, it imparts some of its energy to the photon, and then it, the electron gets deviated a little bit, and then the photon scatters back with some energy. So this is what this equation is. 
right? So this tells you, depending on the energy of the laser, this A parameter, which is this equation right here, tells you what the energy of the photon is. And that's actually part of your next exercise. And that will be the last exercise, actually. All right. So the other thing is we can calculate is the maximum photon energy. So the maximum photon energy is this little thing. It's four times A, which is that, gamma squared, which is that, times the energy of the laser. So we can calculate all that, it's well known. And that will be your last exercise for today. In your little Python notebook, you, you have, you need to implement this and tell me what they are. Yes. Do we have a laser energy of about 532 keV? Uh, nanometers, 532 nanometers. But I want so we're just figuring out that last one right there is. Uh, is 532 nanometers? Okay. Like and the big five that is no, five. The, so okay. this is the photon energy. It's, ten, it's in, in EV. It's 2.6 EV, right? So this is if this is MeV, 10 to the minus six makes it 2.3 EV. Right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's where it's gone. It's the E that we saw earlier. So the conclusion is the photon. So it's coming to the S. That was the E of the photon coming in. So why is it going to hit kind of the other? By the way, that's the electron. Gamma is fine. Chip or something. <laughs> Think about it just mechanically, right? If we have this, I have a green photon. I think the last one is in the lab. It's just the lab. It's just the lab. I mean, the function. So, so if I'm sitting here, uh, and then you have a scan. Yes, yes. Plus, in the next one, I just want to use this. Larger than uh, like the gamma, which was the ratio of electron mass. Electron mass. It happens, of course, we can't know exact, right? But it's a distribution. But that's what I'm pointing out oh, here. Okay. Is that okay. you can calculate uh you can calculate the maximum energy of the photon you have in a in the side of scattering, and you can calculate for each one, depending on the scattering as you can calculate what energy. Oh, and those are the energy. Energy. Oh. laser is the okay. laser. Right. So does everyone have the little Python notebook exercise? All right. Get cracking. The gamma is just. Oh, it's the max. The max. The max. Right? No, I don't think so. We're calculating the max, right? Yeah. I'll do it on the Excuse me. Yep. Um, I was just wondering if everything is correct here because it's a gamma times E laser yeah, over yeah. M E. Isn't that just gamma squared? Yeah. In A. I think it's yeah, so I just did one of those. Yeah. Uh, in the equation for A, it's one over four for one over one plus that's gamma times E laser over M E. Uh, we defined gamma as E laser over M E. So yes, that's one plus. Oh, yes, there's an A here. Sure. So it's just gamma squared. No, no, no. I mean, if you if you replace a into here, you'll see that it doesn't actually cancel things out. One plus, right? Yeah, yeah. On the bottom. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying to replace e laser over m e. Yeah, be gamma. So a is one over one plus four gamma squared. It's been like the expression for A. There's this gamma laser over M E on the bottom of A. That's equivalent to gamma. That is equal to as we have. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, I see. Maybe I didn't add the rest of the electrons. Yeah. Is, I just thought maybe you broke the equation. Yeah. 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 Laser energy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so like it's a dimension that's ratio. So, yeah, Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. This is EB. Sorry. That's a typo here. It's EB. It's the beam of the electron. Sorry about that. EB. Sorry. Oh. Those at the end of the question. Yeah, it's EB. No. The gamma factor is for the beam. Sorry. 
Okay, he needs 5,000, 5G, 5 GV, 12 GV, 18 GV, take your pick, right? We just discussed what the electron beam is gonna be at the EIC. Yes, if you're doing like MEV, GV. MEV, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, in both of those equations, yeah, it's double star. Um, no, e laser is always correct for the one the gas. So double star is so only in the whole only comes in with uh, yeah. the top here. Um, we calculated e laser. So this, if you actually need this, um, some point has to end the Zero to maximize it. It's I think it's the angle between the two photons. So you want to fast it. So Thank you. Uh, laser in the bottom. Oh, right. it's still <laughs> with the gamma. <laughs> Just to make it clear, what is what is E laser? Yes, exactly. The one you previously calculated, yeah? Uh, yeah, I think that's just arbitrary. Generally, when you say that it should become that was a that was a I don't know. 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 Anybody else? Two. Yeah. Good. Like so, so, yeah, so, so, uh, it's a table of the other case, is not a Oh, yeah, yeah, we don't use Yeah, you can just type in the laser, that's what you result from what you do. Then you have already three points. So you can just uh, add in your line. So we have done this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got this. Okay. Um, so okay. Yeah, that's the relativistic gamma. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. do it. Uh, yeah, I'll do that next. Code. All right. So what did you get for? Um, who wants to volunteer an answer? What did you get for five GV? Point five seven. Yep. Seven hundred fifty-seven point something uh, MeV. MeV. All right. So that's. Th did everyone hear that? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's right. Uh, oh, what's my? Sorry. So 
Um, the maximum backscattered photon energy. Who has the thing? <laughs> who, who has the eraser? Okay. So if you look at this equation, when is Emax, when does Emax happen at what scattering angle? When it's parallel with uh, B. Okay, meaning theta what? Theta is zero. What's the what? Sorry, I can hear you. Oh, sorry. When theta is zero. Yes. Parallel with the beam. All right. When theta is zero, this disappears and this becomes that, right? We're all, we're all agreed on that? Okay, so the maximum backscattered photon energy is zero degrees or 180 degree scattering because it's backscattering exactly. So for a green laser, 532, these are some other numbers that you can actually plug in. For a beam of 1 GeV, you'll get 34 MeV. So remember, what was, uh, who has the eraser now? Oh, you can pass it on. So, um, so what was the energy at 532? Do you remember? What's 532 in, ME, in MEV or EV? 2.45. Correct, right. So it's two, two EV. So it gains a lot, yes, from interacting with a one GV elect, uh, electron beam. And for 11 GeV, which is about halfway in the IC range, you get a, pho an, a photon energy that's maximum of 3 GeV. And if we make a plot of beam energy as a, uh, of Emax, so the maximum photon energy as a function of beam energy, this, this is what it looks like, right? So the higher the beam energy, even if you have a fixed laser, the more energy it'll impart on on the photon. So um, I guess we'll call it a day right now, and then we'll, we'll, um, we'll pick this up tomorrow. Uh, what I'd like each and every one of you is to up to here on your Python notebook, make sure that you, I will post the slides up to here. Um, so by, by tomorrow, um, I'd like you to um, sort of fill that part up so that we can, we can go through the rest of it uh, fairly quickly. The other part that I'd like you to have as a homework, there is an angle calculation at which the energy of your photon is gonna be half of your maximum energy. Um, and I give you already the equation here, but try to derive it yourself. So you know what the photon energy equation is, you know what the Emax energy is. If you divide this by two, find out what the scattering angle for that would be and confirm that this works. Does that make sense? Question. Shouldn't it theoretically be plus minus that result because the uh, theta is squared in the equation? Sure. 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 But yes, so the scattering angle well, now it's symmetric. So right. the there's a phi, there's an azimuthal angle, and then yeah. there's a there's a scattering angle, right? So the scattering angle goes zero to pi. As oh, a yeah, yeah. zero to two yeah. pi. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay, other questions? Yep. So I think we're, we're heading towards electron polar imagery. Yep. Um, I'm a theorist, so I wouldn't know. Is this also some way to measure beam energy or is there much other? There is, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. So uh, because, um, so you can, um, you can, so close to beam energy is, um, so the beam energy proportion at the IC is gonna be much easier to determine based on the accelerator that you have and the conditions in the accelerator. Um, but of course, if you know very well, you can apply exactly the same thing. If you know very well what your, um, what your analyzing power would be, then you get the spectrum the photon spectrum, and based on the on the maximum energy of your photon spectrum, you can determine the energy of the beam that way as well. But there's other experimentally easier ways to do it. But yeah, you're ex ex exactly right. You could. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, actually, I have a series. So really, yep. so maybe this maybe a dumb, very dumb question. So I'm sure it's uh, not. What is exactly does it mean that the polarization is a, a percentage? So what, what does does it mean that? Ah, that's a great question. Did, did everyone hear that? 
Yes, no, maybe. Good. You didn't hear that? So the question was, what does it mean that the polarization is a percentage? Does anyone want to hazard a guess? Yep. Uh, so we have like an ensemble of particles, if you can think about it. And I would assume if you have 80% polarization, you can be sure that 80% of the particles are priced like you like. Right. So you can think about it in terms of asymmetries again, right? So if you, what we have in a beam, we don't have, we have millions, billions of electrons, right? They're all flying one way. And some of them have the right of polarization in one direction. And some of them have it in a different direction, right? If it's completely random, then you have an unpolarized beam, right? But if more of them are pointing in one direction than the other, you can, you can then say, you have an 80% polarized beam. So you can do exactly like we did in asymmetry where you say number of electrons pointing that way minus number of electrons pointing that way divided by the sum. That's, if that's 80%, then it means your, 80, your beam is 80% polarized. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to everyone? Good. All right. Is it clear? Oh, Walter has a question. So, um, does measuring the polarization of an electron beam always ultimately require measuring the polarization of something else. Here, you measure the polarization of your incoming photon beam, which you can fortunately do very well. Yeah. If you go to other techniques, you ultimately also have to measure, I think, let's say, you know, molar polarimetry, which you're not talking about. You have to measure the polarization of the electrons. Is that a generally true statement? Most of the time. Yeah, so you can, um, I think there's, uh, there's other techniques where you don't have to do that. Um, uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, there's polarimeters that look at sync light spectrum and you don't have to have um, an interaction there um, with something else polarized. But most of the time you do, like molar polarimeters, if we get to it tomorrow, I'll, I'll show that. You also, you're scattering electrons from other electrons. And if you know the polarization of your electrons that are in the target, um, you can infer what the polarization of your, of your beam electrons are. Yeah. Uh, I, I could use a magnetic, I could send the electron beam through a magnetic. Uh-huh. Um, yep, that's, that's the entire EIC complex. Uh, so is this method, what is why? use this technique to measure spin like so the so in order to get the electron that's a great question so in, in order to get the electrons to such high energies you need to accelerate them right so there's an entire cell accelerator complex i i think you guys probably had lectures about it yes yes right so you need to get them to high energy so in or, the only way to know we know to do that is pass them through cavities and uh, and do a bunch uh, of things to it, right? So you need to impart energy on it. Now, at the end of that process, you need to be able to, uh, to know what, how many of those electrons are polarized in the right direction. So you can't then take them through an additional process where you do some sort of separation, like you were saying, through another magnetic field, because then you don't have that beam that you're interested in to collide with your protons. Right. So what you do, it's a very complicated process in the acceleration to get them to high energy. And once you got them to high energy, you need to keep them there and somehow measure the polarization. So that's why we use this type of technique. Does that make sense? OK. All right. Does the homework make sense? Uh, hopefully it won't take too long. It should be plenty short. OK, thanks a lot. We'll uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow.